Okay, good morning, this is Tim Snyder. Uh, this is the latest of these informal talks I'm giving, which are somewhere between you know, the 90 seconds I get on TV or the 45 minutes I get when I give a lecture. What I'm trying to do is give you five or 10 or 15 minutes about something that's on my mind that bears on current affairs. Last time I talked about the con of America First, that is how America First actually works against the interests of Americans themselves. This time I want to go a bit deeper on the subject and talk about the moral problem of America First or the moral crisis that is generated by America First. So what could be wrong with thinking about yourself first? Well, in terms of moral philosophy, pretty much everything, the whole idea of ethics, whether it's Christian ethics or whether it's ethics that comes out of a big tradition that starts with Immanuel Kant, um, or whether it's any kind of other ethics really, is that you have to be in a position to see the other person as human. And the moment that you start with me first, it's unclear that you can actually see the other person as a me. America First is a good example of that. If you just look at how it works in practice, what does America First actually mean? Does it mean America the country first? No, it doesn't really mean that. What it means is, some people inside the country over other people inside the country. So let's consider this first historically. America First is a reference back to the 1930s, the 1930s through 1940, when America First was a slogan and it was a movement. Um, and of course, the people who came up with America First as a slogan for the Trump administration are perfectly aware of this, of this historical resonance. So America First back then meant some Americans and not all Americans. It meant this in a couple of ways. The first was in terms of class. In the 1930s, the United States was going through the Great Depression. In the 1930s, America faced, as it does today, a tremendous problem of inequality of wealth. Indeed, inequality of wealth in 2018 is about the same as it was in 1929 at the beginning of the Great Depression. So. The first thing that America First meant was the Americans who have wealth over the Americans who don't. America First meant let's not have the Great De let's not have the New Deal. Let's not have reforms that address the Great Depression. Let's just let capitalism work itself out. So that's not what the actual America did. The actual America began the creation in the 1930s of a welfare state that was meant to prevent Americans from being fearful and was meant to help Americans feel like they are Americans. Because by the way, that's what the welfare state is for. The welfare state is there so that everyone can have a chance to move up, to do better, and in so doing to feel like they're American. That's what the welfare state is there for. The second way that America First was about some Americans rather than others is that it forced Americans to ask, who are the real Americans? Who are the ones who actually come first? And that was some Americans, not all Americans. The idea of America first coincided with and indeed represented and expressed a moment when America was very strongly against immigrants, especially against immigrants who are not white people, who are not Christians, who are not from places like, as President Trump put it, Norway. So, this creates a problem not just for the refugees who want to come in. What I want to stress now is that it creates a problem for the people who are already in the country because it suggests that some people are more American than others. And this is not just something which causes discomfort. It has consequences. So in the 1930s, the one thing that the United States could have done to prevent the events that we now call the Holocaust would, be, would have been to take more Jewish refugees. The United States took, for all intents and purposes, no Jewish refugees in the 1930s. The America could have taken a million or two, never would have known the difference, but we didn't. And one of the reasons we didn't was that people were saying America first. When people said America first, that made it very hard for Americans who were Jewish to talk about the oppression of Jews in Europe. Because as soon as they said that, then other people said, well, you don't care about America first, you only care about those other Jews. And that defined the position 
of American Jews who were trying to point to the events that we would call the Holocaust. It, it painted them into a corner before the discussion had already begun. So if you want to know what America First means, it means that it, it prevents Americans from seeing one another as Americans, and it also prevents America from helping others. If we're going to think about the 1930s, if we're going to think about America First and where it came from, and if we're going to think of ourselves as a people who like to help other people who would have done something about the Holocaust, then we should be very serious about America First. Now, this has consequences which are completely apparent in the present day. When you say America First, that raises the question in 2018 of who the real Americans are, who actually comes first. And once again, not surprisingly, it's the people of European origin, it's the people who are Christians, who are then being instructed that they come first. This is not just bad for everyone else. I would say it's above all bad for them. Because when you think that you come first, when you're instructed to and you accept the instruction to include, to exclude other people, you're changing the way you are yourself. And you're also changing your expectations of government. You no longer expect that government is going to do things for you, like in the New Deal, like the welfare state, that will help you get a leg up. You start to think, well, I come first, and I want government to tell me that I come first, and that's all that I really need. I talked about this more in the lecture on sadopopulism. But this also has direct effects for how America is seen in the world. If you've been following the news, you might have noticed that Poland passed a law a few days ago um, which has to do with declaring that the Polish state and the Polish nation were innocent during the Holocaust. That is nothing else than Poland first. That is precisely the idea that we come first, we do no wrong. If anyone did something wrong, it was other people. And there are always plenty of other people who do things that are wrong. In the case of the Holocaust, it was, of course, above all things, a crime of the German state committed chiefly by, by Germans. That said, um, once you make the move to say, us first, we're totally innocent, it then immediately has the consequence of making other people feel uncomfortable. Jews in Poland feel uncomfortable. Jews around the world understandably feel like this will make it difficult to talk about what actually happened in the 1930s and in the 1940s. And incidentally, and this is a point I made in the last lecture, it also weakens Poland. America first, or in this case Poland first, not only makes you wrong, it simultaneously makes you weak at, at the same time. I think this is what bothers me above all about it. So I'm going to close on this note about Poland and the 1930s and about what it means uh, for, for to, to say us first or to say me first. So I'm, I, I just got back a few hours ago from Warsaw uh, where I was attending the funeral of my doctoral supervisor, uh, a historian whose name was Jerzy Elitsky, or his name as an adult um, was Jerzy Elitsky. He had to change his name in Warsaw during the war because his family was of Jewish origin. So Jerzy Elitsky was saved during the Holocaust by his mother, Vanda. And when, when one reads what Vanda says about her experiences in Warsaw in the 1940s, what she says, or what she wrote in 1966, I think it was, is that what matters much less is politics. What matters much more is basic human decency. So I, I'm going to close by asking you, what is basic human decency? Basic human decency is the ability to see the other person as a person. If you start with me first, what you're doing is closing off your ability to see the other person as a person. The logic of America first, the logic of me first, leads to ever more exclusion. First you exclude the world, then you ask who are the real people inside your own country, and before you know it, people are excluding one another down to the level of, of friends and families, and you get to a place which is a very dark place, like for example, occupied Warsaw in the early 1940s. In that situation, once you get all the way down there, once it's down to everyone for himself or everyone for herself, people are going to behave very badly. Because some people didn't say, me first, because some people didn't say that, um, Vanda was able to live. This is her own account. 
because some people didn't say that, um, Wanda was able to save her two boys, not her husband who was murdered, not most of the Jews of Warsaw who, who were murdered, but she was able to save herself and her two boys. And because of that, one of her boys, Jerzy, grew up to become the historian who trained me and to help me to think the kinds of things that I'm thinking now and sharing with you. Thanks.